Hello guys, today we're going to have a look at the PC400 model again We're going to try and add a slew mechanism to it So we have a big gear that goes in the middle We have an N20 gear motor with a gear that will run along the outside And we have a slip ring for the centre But before we can do that, we have to add some pins to our boom here So my plan for the pins is to try and make them look a little bit, uh, a little bit more realistic So. I'm going to take a nail like this and I'll file down the outside of it so that it fits more snugly into the grooves on the on the boom itself here then I'll cut it to the right size and drill a hole through so that I can put a little bit of wire in to act as a pin I think it'll look a little bit more realistic than adding, uh, adding lock nuts to it for example but we'll have to see how it turns out that, that idea might not work I've pretty much finished the pins here. I'll show you one of them. I I need to finish off uh, the end of it here. I want to make it uh, a bit smaller, be a bit more realistic. But basically, it's just a little pin with a hole through it, and I'll just put a little bit of copper wire through the hole and bend it over to fasten it. Then that way, I can easily uh, put in and out the pins. The little bit of wire will be useful if we want to change the buckets or change the motors or anything later just bend the wire out and uh, remove it and you can take out the pin so it's a pretty simple solution and when it's painted up the Komatsu yellow it should look pretty realistic I think at the minute the pivot point on this machine is pretty simple there's one screw in the centre of the model there and that holds it together and the weight is distributed on this uh, circular piece of plastic here and a bit of steel here so that allows the model to uh, pivot quite freely and still support a lot of the weight but I need to get this gear on here so what I'm going to do is remove the plastic piece here remove this piece of metal and mount the gear uh, in the centre here so that the function that this used to provide the, the the bit of support on the edges will be now supplied by the top of the gear so the gear will sit in there and the whole weight will be supported on this rather large gear so the first thing to do is cut away this metal ring here and drill the holes for the gear so that we can mount it securely in the centre here is the gear for the slewing mechanism mounted on the chassis. I cut away the steel part, the steel ring that was in here, and removed this plastic ring. And I was able to align the gear in the center using another gear from the pack that I got this bigger gear from. So this just so happened that this smaller gear here, there's I don't know if you can see on the on the camera there, but there's a ring of teeth that runs around the outside here and the inner diameter of that ring just happens to be the right dimensions for the metal ring in the middle of the gear or in the middle of the chassis here so I was able to place this gear inside the bigger gear and like that use that little gear to center the bigger gear so hopefully that will work out and it will be close enough to symmetrical in the center of the uh, chassis there so that this gear doesn't lose or doesn't skip any teeth as it goes around should be should be fine it, it seems to be perfectly centered the holes on the gear were four millimeter so I just drilled some 3.5 millimeter holes in the chassis here and tapped them to M4 so that's how the gear is held on I had to add some spacers underneath the underneath the gear get it back up to the height of this ring because this ring was supporting the 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 weight of the boom and the, the body of the excavator so I had to add a few spacers to get it to the same height so that it still was exactly the same as when we started so I'll put the model back together and I'll show you that it still slews no problem now that I've screwed the model back together the gear is acting like this plastic piece it's supporting the whole boom and it's uh, quite a smooth operation still so that seems to have worked quite well. 
Next thing we need to figure out is how to get some sort of channel up through the centre so that we can run the wires from the from the slip ring up through it. I've finally gotten round to getting a slewing mechanism that works pretty good with this uh, model. So I've 3D printed the parts and today I'm going to just show you the different parts that I had to make to get this to work. It took me a long time to get this working. I had been trying to do it with uh, some metal pieces, trying to make these pieces from metal and it uh, was very slow and when you made a mistake it took a long time to rebuild it. But now that I've got the 3D printer working I was able to uh, kind of make prototypes a lot faster and as you can see I went through a lot of different uh, iterations of the design I suppose until I got the, the one that worked. So the 3D printer has made a big difference for things like this, has made it uh, a little bit easier to make these complicated pieces. So what I'll do is take the model apart because the working one is inside this and I'll just show you uh, the different pieces that I had to make to get this to work. Okay here are the different parts that I needed to make the uh, slew mechanism. The main trick to this build is getting the wires from the slip ring on the lower half of the model up into the upper half without them getting tangled because you can't put the you can't attach the top half to the bottom half and put the wires on the outside of the of the bolt like that because it's going to get caught in something as it uh, as it rotates so this has to go up through the center of the bolt that's holding the whole model together so what I did to get around that was I took the center piece here this used to go into the middle of the lower half here and there was a screw up the middle and you basically just screw the washer onto the bottom half here which held this on so this was fixed in here with just a, a screw and a washer basically on the end of this piece so what I did was drill this out to three three and a half millimeter hole something like that so that there's a hole coming up just in here so that's where the wires gonna come out uh, I'll show you that actually. So now, where the screw used to attach, is now a hole where the wires can come out through the through the model there. So that was the wires in the centre of the model. This piece in the middle wasn't a perfect cylinder. There was a, a lip on this side, so I had to grind this down, and then that allowed me to tap the end of this to a six millimeter thread. So now I can thread a six millimeter nut on there so now we're able to attach a nut on here and still get our wires up through the middle without them getting tangled so that's kind of the trick to this it's the that's the difficult part getting over that small hurdle so the next piece we need was a motor mount and it was easier to mount the motor on the upper half because there's more space and all i did was basically uh, take these dimensions for this circle and uh, the positions of the the bolts here or the holes for the bolts and just replicate them with the 3d printer and add a motor mount here so that'll just fit up there at the rear here i had to cut out a section because the, the position of the motor is obviously governed by the gear in the center here so i needed to cut away some material here to uh, leave space for the motor and that just fits in there some of the initial versions of this, I didn't have the lip on the edge here, this little uh, kind of shelf that's sticking out. That catches on here and that just adds a little bit of extra stability to the motor. That just stops the, the little bit of plastic flexing and letting the motor slip on the on the larger gear here. So if the motor was able to bend back a bit, it, uh, it might slip on the gear. So adding this little extra little lip to just catch the the metal there that just stops the motor from moving back get that in focus so that little lip just stops the motor from flexing out of its uh, ideal position so the screws of this then they connect to the body of the model So this is the original screwing points but I had to add some longer bolts just to uh, 
just to get through the layer of plastic as well because the bolts that came with this were obviously a little bit shorter because they didn't have to go this far so that's the motor in position I had to cut a piece out of the body here again to let the motor in but it doesn't affect it too much it comes up there quite nicely in the model and that's pretty hidden beneath the other half of the model so if we can get the plastic so you can see there the motor is pretty well hidden in there you can't really see it all that much so that's pretty good next piece then is we need to connect something here that can attach to the base of the model this uh, this base of the model here so the next piece that we need is kind of like a slew ring so basically what we have here is two cylinders here and the smaller cylinder obviously enough slips up into the upper half of the model there that centers it so that keeps the model or well that keeps all the models centered really and the lower ring then has a row of nuts that will connect to the lower half of the model and uh, basically all I did was print a little hex shape and I'm able to just push the, the nuts in there like that so the nuts go in like that and then when I press this up here they can't fall out because it's press fit up against the top of the model I had to inset this piece here because we we're limited by the length of this bolt so I had to make room for a lock nut here so I'm using a lock nut so that it won't just come loose when uh, the model is turning so I can tighten that up Just to, just to tighten it slightly by just feel that there's not too much movement there but we're still able to spin around and the lock nut should stop that from coming loose again so now that that's fixed in place the next piece to go on is the gear so we just need to line the, the nuts here with the holes in the in the larger gear so that go on like that after the gear we need this little spacer that goes between the gear and the lower half of the body and you can see here that there's a couple of little pins and what these actually do is line up with the bolt holes on the slew ring so if we put the wires through this part then we can find that the bolt holes or those pins line up with the bolt holes and you can see I've had to remove part of the slew ring to let the just to let the little M3 bolts go through so that's all that is then that obviously goes on to the lower half of the model put the wires through here I had to cut away a, I had to cut away a ring that was here and then I had to drill a hole here just to let this slew ring piece through but then that will go through there line up the the holes and I can put our bolts through now I haven't cut the bolts to I haven't cut the bolts to the right length yet so I'm just using a few washers for now and there will be four bolts but I just have two at the minute so that goes like that then we need to feed the wires up through the body of the model
and line the bolts up with the gear and the upper half of the model. Then just tighten it all up. And that is the slew mechanism mounted on the model. You can see there it doesn't lift it up too high. It might have added a millimetre or two between the body and the tracks but I don't think it's too bad. I think it should be okay. So I'll just get the power supply and I'll show you this moving. Okay I have a 5 volt power supply here so I should be able to show you the model spinning. So you can see there, no problem, no problem slewing around with 5 volts. I think that's a pretty good result. I will be powering the model from 7.4 volts, so it should have a little bit more power when um, when the model is finished. So at 7.4 volts, it should have plenty of power. Um, I think it's going to take four motor drivers and two Arduino Pro Minis to completely control this model. Uh, just because the sheer number of pins required for all the motor drivers so that'll be in an upcoming video and some of you uh, keen eye viewers might have noticed that I changed the tracking uh, motor mounts to a 3D printed version put it here. so this is a, one of the prototype ones I'll have videos of that in the future and they just slide in there. I had to cut off the end of the um, end of the tracks here. So one of these pieces was on the end here. So I cut that off and then just made the 3D printed piece a little more amount that will slide in there. So hopefully that will work out pretty good too. I also 3D printed a gear for the tracks. So if you want to see that, make sure and subscribe. That'll be in a couple of weeks maybe. And if you have any comments or suggestions on this build, uh, make sure and post them either below the video or head over to the forum. And that's pretty much everything, so thanks very much for watching.